<clears throat> hello? Testing, hello, hello. How is my audio? Um, let me know if you can hear me, if the volume is good. Um, if not, I'll adjust my microphone. Um, <clears throat> probably wait a minute or two just to let people roll in. Shows me there are two people in the chat, but I think one of them is me. So I'm just going to wait a minute. Wait, let's say one more minute and then I'll get started because I do want to start on time, even if uh, there are only two of us here. Um, <clears throat> meanwhile, uh, you can head over to freecodecamp.org. Um, and if you haven't made an account yet, I would sign up. Uh, you can either follow along with me um, and do the problems at the same time, or you can watch the video and do them after. You don't have to do the exercises at all, but I think it will be helpful. So I'm going to just start by um, reading the first message you get when you sign up for Free Code Camp. And here it is. Okay. So Free Code Camp is a proven path to your first software developer job. More than 40,000 people have gotten developer jobs after completing this, including at big companies like Google and Microsoft. If you're new to programming, we recommend you start at the beginning and earn these certifications in order. To earn each certification, build its five required projects, and get all the tests to pass. You can add these certifications to your resume or LinkedIn. But more important than the certifications is the practice you get along the way. If you feel overwhelmed, that is normal. Programming is hard. Practice is the key. Practice, practice, practice. And this curriculum will give you thousands of hours of hands-on programming practice. And if you want to learn more math and computer science theory, uh, there's a YouTube channel for that. Um, if you want to get a developer job or freelance clients, programming skills will be just part of the puzzle. You also need to build your network, uh, and you can do this on LinkedIn and GitHub and the free code camp form. Okay, and if you want, you can sign up for the newsletter. Um, okay, so now I think we can just jump into the curriculum. Let's head over here to the curriculum. And they recommend that you do them in order. We're going to just start with the new responsive web, de web design certification. So this is going to cover HTML, CSS, um, and give you know, some insight on uh, uh, topography and other things like that. Okay. So in responsive web design certification, we'll learn uh, how to build web pages using HTML uh, and CSS for design. Um, the first project is building a cat photo app uh, to learn the basics of HTML and CSS. And then we'll learn more modern techniques like CSS variables uh, and best practices for accessibility. Finally, we'll make web pages uh, using different screen sizes uh, and build a photo gallery using Flexbox um, and CSS Grid. If these words don't mean anything yet, that's fine because uh, we're about to get started. Okay. 
So here they have a whole calendar. Um, I think we just start with the first one. This um, layout is a bit new to me when I did Free Code Camp back in 2017. It looked very different. Um, so let's just start project. Okay, so here's a preview of what we're going to build. It's a cat photo app. Uh, here you can see the cat. Um, looks like a link to see more photos. Um, a list of the things cats love, things cats hate, cat form. Uh, and basically how they're going to do this is breaking it down into sections. So we'll start by building the top and work our way down um, through the other parts of this app. Okay, so on the left hand side you can see we have this uh, interactive editor uh, and on the right hand side shows us a preview of the code that we built. Um, <clears throat> and before I jump in, if you have any questions or if I'm going too fast, you can feel free to write so in the chat. Okay. So here we have our file, index.html. And here are the instructions. So step one, HTML elements have opening tags like h1 and closing tags like h1, right? So here you can see um, <clears throat> it's enclosed in the greater than sign, or sorry, the less than sign and greater than sign. That's a tag. Um, and what's inside of it, that's just the name of the tag. So this is an h1 tag or um, an h1 element um, and it has a closing tag denoted by that backslash over there or sorry forward slash uh, so the text for an element goes between its opening and closing tags find the h1 element and change its text to cap photo app so here we have the line they want us to edit so it has the opening h1 tag ending h1 tag and they want us to switch this text to say cat photo app. And you can see the change on the screen. We'll do check your code. Okay, the test passed. So now we can move on to the next challenge. So this is a pretty basic challenge. And a lot of them are going to be pretty basic just to give us a feel of how things work and build up your confidence and things just get harder as you go. But all right. Step two, the H1 through H6 heading elements are used to signify the importance of content below them. The lower the number, the higher the importance. So H2 elements have less importance than H1 elements. Only use H1 element per page, one H1 element per page and place lower importance headings uh, below higher importance headings. Okay, so in a uh, web page, you're only going to have one H1 element and that might be like the heading of the page and everything else are sort of subheadings. So they should be structured according to their importance and um, used one underneath the other, right? So an H3 shouldn't come before an H2 and H2 shouldn't come before H1. Um, okay, so below the H1 element that we have here, the cat photo app, they want us to add an H2 element with this text. So we have our a opening tag for the H2. Uh, and we can already add the closing tag so we won't forget. And then inside of here, it should say cat photos. We'll check our code and pass the test so we can go to the next challenge. All right, the P element is used to create a paragraph of text on websites. Create a P element below your H2 element and give it the following text. So here I'm just gonna copy this text. Um, we'll make a P element, opening tag, closing tag, oops, closing tag, and just slip the, oh no, can I, can I not paste here? here I, there we go. Okay. It just wanted me to allow control for it to uh, paste the content. There we go. So P again is for paragraph text. How are we doing on time? All right, nine minutes in. 
making good progress. Okay. Um, commenting allows you to leave messages without affecting the browser display. It allows you to make code inactive. A comment in HTML starts with uh, less than exclamation point dash dash, uh, contains any number of lines of text, and ends with dash dash uh, greater than. Uh, for example, the comment uh, to do remove h1 contains the text to do remove h1. Um, add a comment above the p element with this text. To do, add link to cat photos. Okay, so to do's, um, Sometimes we'll leave that in our code. Shouldn't be left for too long, um, but just you're not gonna deal with it right now. It should be dealt with later. So you make a comment to come back to it. It's also useful, especially when starting out to leave uh, comments in your code. So when you come back to them, it's sort of obvious what's going on. Um, you can't leave comments without doing this because then it would appear on your web page. So let me show you what it would look like. If we didn't make it a comment, we would have, let's say, this text, which we're going to copy and paste. Right? So you can see um, that was the wrong text. But you can see that it appears here because we didn't put it in a comment like it wanted us to. This is the right text. So copy, paste. Right? So we don't want anyone to see this in our application, so we're going to leave it as a comment. And we can do that with here. Now you can see this is all greened out because we need to close it with the dash dash over here. Okay. And that's a comment. Let's go to the next challenge. Uh, again, if you have any questions, leave them in the chat. I'll try to uh, get to them as soon as I see them. All right, uh, HTML5 has some elements. HTML5, by the way, that's just like the newer version of HTML. When I started learning HTML, it was also HTML5. So HTML5, HTML, you can just use interchangeably, basically. Um, has some elements that identify different content areas. These elements make your HTML easier to read and help with search engine optimization, SEO, and accessibility. So identify the main section of this paragraph by adding a main opening tag before the h1 element and a main closing tag after the p element. So unlike the uh, h1 and h2 and p tags, the main uh, doesn't really do anything. It's just identifying a section. It's just used as a semantic tag. That's what we say, which helps with accessibility. Let's say someone... Um, is blind and they're using a screen reader. Uh, so that uh, helps the screen reader. And again, for SEO, it helps the uh, bots understand uh, the content of your site better, it makes it easier for them to read. So we'll add a main after the P tag, right? Oh, before the H1 element, sorry. <clears throat> so we're gonna start the main element here and then we're going to end it after the p tag. Right. So all of this is encompassed in our main section. Step six. In the previous step, you put the h1, h2 comment, and p elements inside the main element. This is called the nesting. Nested elements should be placed two spaces further to the right of the element um, they are nested in. The spacing is called indentation, and it's used to make HTML easier to read, right? So we have main, and then indented, indented. Here actually our P isn't indented. So let's indent that. Um, and then it closes off here, not indented. The H1 element and H2 element and the comment are indented two spaces more than the main element in the code below. Use the space bar on your keyboard to add two more spaces in front of the P element so that it's indented properly as well. So you can see I actually already did that um, instinctively. So, but right before it was like that, so they just wanted us to add the two spaces. So now they're all indented. Okay, next. Um, just a note on the indentation, it doesn't actually matter, right? It just makes the code easier to read and follow um, <clears throat> when it's properly structured, right? If you have nested elements, 
it can get very messy if you don't use proper indentation. So just uh, for the sake of whoever's reading the code, which would be you, um, it's easier to uh, <clears throat> use proper indentation. But it doesn't affect the actual outcome of the code. As we saw, the preview was exactly the same. All right, step seven. You can add images to your website by using the image element. Uh, image elements have an opening tag without a closing tag. A tag for an element without a closing tag is known as a self-closing tag. Okay, what's that mean, right? So in the P element, um, we can see there's an opening tag, then the text, and then a closing tag. So here it's going to be self-closing tag. There's just gonna be one opening and closing element. We're not going to have image, content image. It's just going to be one image element, you'll see. Add an image element below the P element. At this point, no image will show up in the browser. Okay, so they just want us to do this. All right, so you can see here, it's a self-closing tag. Could also do it without the slash. Um, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, in certain uh, contexts, it might matter. In this case, it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't want to dive too deep into it. It's not, it's not so important at this moment. Okay. Um, HTML attributes are special words used inside the opening tag of an element to control the element's behavior. The source attribute is uh, in an image element specifies the image's URL, where the image is located. So an example of an image element using source attribute, image source example.com, the image.jpg. Inside the existing image element, add a source attribute with this URL. So let's copy this URL. They want us to use the source attribute. So you can see it's already read um, in their editor they have here. So you know it's going to be different. And then we have an equal sign, quotes. And then in here, we want this link. And now we have our cat. So again, um, inside of elements, you have attributes. Some, uh, all of them have attributes essentially. So in this case, image has a special attribute for the source. And this is a URL linking to this photo. Next. All right, step nine. All image elements should have an alt attribute. The alt attributes text is used for screen readers to improve accessibility and is displays if the image fails to load. Um, you've probably seen before uh, an image that just has a broken image thumbnail or something like that. And that is because they didn't put an alt text. If you have an alt text, that will that is what's going to appear on the screen in case the image doesn't load. Okay, so the alt they want us to have is um, with the text a cat. Inside the image element, add an alt attribute. Okay, sorry. Their example is a cat. They want it to be called a cute orange cat lying on its back. Should be our alt. But let me just show you what it would look like if let's say we change this. So now the URL is incorrect and we don't have an alt text. So you can see the image is showing this broken image thumbnail, right? And if we add the alt like they want, that's, so now it's, we don't see it anymore because I added the alt and it's just empty. So now we'll make the alt text. Yeah. So we still have the broken image icon, but it at least shows you the text of what it's supposed to be. Okay, now let me change this back to the right URL. And there we go. All right. Step 10, you can link to another page with the anchor element, for example, um, a href, this URL, will link to freecodecamp.org. Add an anchor after the paragraph that links to freecatphotoapp.com. At this point, the link won't show up in the preview. Okay. Right, it won't show up because we're not putting any text in. Okay, so we're going to do a href, right? So again, href is an attribute of the anchor, tag, anchor element. Uh, 
And you might notice here in their example, they have uh, single quotes and here I'm using double quotes. Doesn't, doesn't make a difference. You can use either. A href and then we'll close the A element like that. And like they said, it, it, it doesn't show up in the preview yet, but presumably in the next challenge it will. All right, here they want us to donate. I'm not gonna do that right now, but maybe later. All right. Um, yes, a link's text must be placed between the opening and closing tags of an anchor element. For example, um, click here to go to freecodecamp.org. Uh, is a link with the text click here to go to freecodecamp.org. Add the anchor text link to cat pictures. So let's copy this so we don't have any typos. Um, to the anchor element, this will become the link's text. So we'll just insert it in here. Now you can see it shows link to cat pictures. And if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, you'll see it shows that it's going to go to freephotoapp.com. All right, test passed. Step 12. In the previous step, you turned the words link to cat pictures into a link by placing them between opening and closing anchor tags. You can do the same to words inside of an element such as a P element. In the text of your P element, turn the words cat photos into a link um, to this by adding opening and closing anchor tags around these words. What? <laughs> In the text of your P element, turn the words cat photos. Okay, they want a link. All right, so instead of cat photos, it should be a link. So we'll open up an A tag. And let's close the A tag. Um, and now we just need to add a link by using the href attribute and it should be pointed to here. Okay, does that make sense? So now instead of it just saying cat photos, cat photos is a link. Um, click here to view more cat photos, right? And cat photos is inside this A tag. So this would take us to freecatphotoapp.com, this link. Let's check our code. Oh, it doesn't pass. Okay. Um, that's embarrassing. You have either omitted the text or have a typo. Oh, is it because of the period? It's because of the period. Sorry, the period was not supposed to be in the, uh, <clears throat> in the A element. All right, now it passes. So that's another thing to keep in mind with free code camp. Sometimes it's very, very precise and something that didn't really matter too much. In this case, it sort of mattered because the link included a period, um, which maybe aesthetically is not what you would want. But just to keep in mind to be precise when doing the challenges, do exactly what it asks. Okay, step 13. Now that you turn the text cat photos inside the P element into a link, you don't need the second link below the P element. Right, that's true. We now have uh, cat photos linked over here, so we don't really need it over here. So they just want us to delete the entire anchor element below the P element. So this is the anchor element. Let's just delete that. Check our code. Great, that was an easy one. All right, add a target attribute with the value blank to the uh, A element's opening tag so that the link opens in a new tab. Right, if we were to click it right now, it would open on this page, which we don't want. We want to stay on this page. So we can use the target attribute and blank. Right, so now if we open it, click this, should open in a new tab. Let's try that. Um, okay, so it's just telling us it works, right? Free Code Camp is catching this because it's not actually uh, it doesn't want us to navigate away which is fine great so that works next challenge turn the image into a link by surrounding it with an with necessary element tags um, use free photo app 
dot com as the anchor's href attribute value. Okay, they want us to make the image also link to this website. Um, right? Oh, um, turn the image into a link by surrounding it with the necessary element tags. Okay, so I guess we need an a tag here and an a tag here. Then we'll have an href and copy this, paste it in here. Okay, so now, again, it's just telling us that that worked, but um, clicking on the image, we turned the image into a link by surrounding it, right? We nested it inside of this anchor tag, the anchor element, right? So we have the A element, inside it we have the image, and then ending off, we have the A element. Sorry, I'm gonna take a quick water break. We're almost at the halfway point. So <clears throat> congratulations to whoever has made it this far. Um, all right, before adding any new content, you should make use of a section element to separate the cat photos content from the future content. Take your H2 comment, uh, P and anchor elements and nest them inside a section element. All right, let's see. So we have our H2 comment um, H2, comment, P element, A elements, and now we're going to put them in the section. So we had the main, and now we're going to use the section element. So here we have section, and we'll end off the section after the A elements. Again, this is another semantic tag. It's not changing our code in any way, um, but it will help uh, for SEO and accessibility. All right, let's make sure that's right. Great. All right, it's time to add a new section. Add a second section element below the existing section element. All right, add a new section. So we finished off this section, so we're just going to add an empty section here. Open and close. That's it. Within the second section element, add a new H2 element with the text cat lists. Okay, so H2 element, close off the H2 element, and then put in cat lists. All right, step 19. When you add a lower rank heading element to this page, it's implied that you're starting a new subsection. After the last H2 element of the second section element, add an H3 element with this text. Things cats love. Okay. H3. H3. We're going to copy this and paste it in our H3. I didn't, why can't I see it here? I need to scroll. There we go. Things cats love. Passes the test. Can move on to the next challenge. All right, step 20. Uh, I think we saw there were 31 steps. So we're almost done with the cat photo app. Um, after the H3 element with the things cats love text, add an unordered list element. All right, things are getting interesting. Note that nothing will be displayed at this point. All right. So for this challenge, they just want us to add UL, which is for an unord unordered list. We'll see what that is in a second. Check code, great. All right, use list item, LI elements, to create items in a list. Here's an example of list items in an unordered list, right? So we have the UL inside, nested inside, we have LI elements. So here's where, um, is there a link to get this on desktop using the QR code? I could only 
get this on my phone. Um, yeah, I mean, you could copy the link, but I could, I could paste it here. Um, one second, I'll just grab the link, copy. And I'm just going to paste this here. All right, so if you just follow that link, um, you can open it up from your desktop. OK, great. Let's see, use list item li elements to create items in a list. All right, <clears throat> within the ul element, nest three items to display three things cats love. All right, so they love catnip, laser pointers, and lasagna. So let's put our li elements and close an li element. And we have catnip. And you know what? I'm just going to copy paste these so I don't have to write it out each time. All right, so now it should say catnip three times. We want it to say laser pointers and lasagna. So let's just switch out the text. All right, so these are list items inside of an unordered list, right? An ordered list, we'll see in a second, but here presumably the order doesn't matter of the things. They're just three different things, catnip, laser pointers, and lasagna. All right, after the unordered list, add a new image with a source attribute value set to this, um, and its alt attribute value to a slice of lasagna on a plate. Okay, so we're adding another image. Source attribute should be, uh, looks like it's going to be a lasagna. And they want an alt text, a slice of lasagna on a plate. And let's, again, image tags are self-closing, right? So there isn't an opening image element and a closing image element. It's uh, closing tag, it's self-closing. And here we can see our lasagna photo. All right, next challenge. Step 23. The figure element represents self-contained content and will allow you to associate an image with a caption. All right, so nest the image you just added within a figure element, okay. I'm not sure if you used this element before. This might be new to me. I think it's a semantic one. Um, okay, so we have figure. Maybe it's not because they said you can add a caption. And figure. Okay, we didn't do anything yet, but we added it inside figure. Let's go to the next challenge. A figure caption, fig caption element is used to add a caption to describe the image contained within the figure element, right? So we have the figure element, so we're going to use a fig caption element. Um, for example, fig caption, a cute cat, fig caption, adds the caption, a cute cat. After the image nested in, uh, in the figure element, add a fig caption element with the text set to cats love lasagna. So we want to add a figure caption using fig caption, we'll close fig caption. And, um, oh, they want it after the image element. So let's cut that out and paste over here. And inside it should say cats love lasagna. Again, I like copying the text because sometimes if the text is off, you won't pass the challenge. So we just want to make sure it's correct. Oh, it didn't pass. Okay. Um, oh, closing tags have a for, uh, forward slash just after the uh, this character, which I forgot here. So thank you for the hint. And there we go. The test passed. Uh, these mistakes, by the way, happen all the time. Um, 
typically in text editors, you might use um, <clears throat> like downloaded ones. Uh, I use uh, VS Code, Visual Studio Code. You can look it up afterwards if you already want to start using a real editor. So they'll normally show you when you have some sort of issue with your uh, syntax. All right, so emphasize the word love in the fig caption element by wrapping it in an emphasis element, which is em. Okay, so we'll open the em tag and we'll close it here. Um, and we can see here the caption, cats love lasagna. So it's really like italics though, no? Okay. Uh, after the figure element, add another h3 element with text. Top three things cats hate. So let's already copy this text. And we're going to want an h3 after the figure. There we go. h3. Test passes. Step 27, lots of steps here. Um, but I think we've made pretty good progress so far. Right, this, this could be a website. You know, if you really love cats and your cats love lasagna. The code for an unordered list is similar to an, um, ordered list is similar to an unordered list, but list items in an ordered list are numbered. Uh, that makes sense. After the second section elements, last H3 element that we just put in, we're going to add an ordered list with these three list items. Okay, so we have ordered list, and then we want to close the ordered list. Let's just make sure they're indented the same. And then inside, we're going to have three list items. One, and let's copy this. Two, three, Flea treatment is the first list element. Let's paste that here. You can already see I have one, two, three. We'll just fill these in. Okay, check our code. Looking good. Step 28, after the ordered list, add another figure element. Okay. Figure. Right, so that means we're going to have another image coming up. No, your figure element should have an opening tag. I forgot to close it. There we go. <clears throat> Inside the figure element, you just added nest an image element. Image, source, paste in this into the attribute source and close it. And what do we have? We have some more cats. Very cute. Congratulations, next challenge. All right, and we wanna improve the accessibility again. So we're going to add an alt and the alt is five cats looking around a field. So that's generally what alt tags are, right? They're just describing the photo. So if someone's visually impaired or, um, or your photo hasn't loaded, they'll see an alt text describing. It's also good for SEO, which they didn't mention. Okay, great, we passed that. After the last image element, add a fig caption element with the text, cats hate other cats, right? So fig caption is just a caption that goes inside the figure element. So fig, Caption, and let's close it properly this time. And then inside of here, let's drop in this text. Cats hate other cats. Check our code, it's good. Next. All right, 840, so 20 minutes. All right, the strong element is used to indicate that some text of strong importance or urgent and the fig caption you just added indicate that hate is of strong importance by wrapping it in a strong element. So before we had emphasis with the em tag, and that was on love. And now they want hate, which is a strong word to be inside a tag. 
And there we go. Now we've bolded the word hate using the strong tag. All right, let's move on to the next challenge. All right, it's time to add a new section. Add a third section element below the second section element. Where are we? Um, so the section ends here, so we need to add another section element over here. Close it properly, check our code, move on to the next challenge. Okay, inside the third section element, add an H2 element with the text cat form. All right, here we go. Open it up with an H2. And then we'll add the text cat form and close H2. Next challenge. After the cat form heading, add a form element. Okay, right, so that's going to be used to collect information from users. So form, and then we'll close close form. You can assume that an element isn't self-closing unless it specifies here that it is self-closing. Right. The action attribute indicates where form data should be sent. For example, form action to this URL tells the browser that the form data should be sent to the path forward slash submit URL. Add an action attribute with the value freephotoapp.com submit cat photo to the form element. Okay, so when the form will be submitted with this action attribute, it's going to be sent to this URL. Check our code. It's good. Next challenge. Input step 37. Okay, let me just check. Um, does it tell us how we're doing? It does. Oh, wow. There's a lot of steps. So we're a bit more than halfway done with the challenges here. 20 minutes to go. Uh, let's jump back, resume. Okay. The input element allows you several ways to collect data from a web form, like image elements. Input elements are self-closing and do not need closing tags. So nest an input element in the form element. Okay, so let's open up input here and it's self-closing, so that's it, just input. Okay, so there's a lot of different kinds of inputs, um, and we can choose what type of input using the type attribute. Uh, you can easily create a password field, reset button, or a control to let users select a file from their computer. Create a text field to get text input from a user by adding the type attribute with the value text to the input. Let's see. Here we, we can already see the input we added, but now we're just going to add type text that will allow people to type text into here. All right, great. Next challenge. Um, for form data to be accessed by the location specified in the attribute, action attribute, you must give the text field a name attribute and assign it a value to represent the data being submitted. For example, you could use the following syntax for an email address. So type text, name email. Add the name attribute with the value cat photo URL to your text field. So all it's saying here is when someone's submitting a form, um, it needs to know what fields it's submitting. So we wanna give these different inputs names. So here we'll call it cat photo URL and we'll give it the, uh, sorry, backwards. Name is the attribute, and here the va value of that attribute is cat photo URL. So we'll check our code and go to the next challenge. Okay, placeholder text. So placeholder text is used to give people a hint about what kind of information to enter into an input. For example, input type text placeholder email address um, so we want to add the placeholder text cat photo URL into our input element. So here we have our input element, right? People could type in there. But now we're going to have placeholder text. So they know what we actually want from them. So here, cat 
photo URL. Voila, we have this grayed out uh, text that allows the user to know what sort of information we expect from them. Might even finish this whole section, let's see. All right, to prevent a user from submitting your form when required information is missing, you need to add the required attribute to an input element. There's no need to set a value to the required attribute. Instead, just add the word required to the input element, making sure there is a space between it and other attributes. So we'll just add it here at the end. We'll type in the words required and no values needed. Okay. So now the form won't be able to be submitted unless someone submits uh, this text, submits something inside of our input. All right, test passed, next. Use the button element to create a clickable button. For example, button click here creates a button with the text click here. Add a button element with the text submit below the input element. The default behavior of clicking on a form button without any attribute submits the form to the location specified in the form's action attribute. Right, so we created our form here and it would submit to this URL. So now we just want to add a button element and have the text submit. Check our code, it's good. Next, step 43. Even though you added your button below the text input, they appear next to each other on the page. So let's just take a look, right? That's true. That's because both input and button elements are inline elements, all right? Now we're talking about some CSS, which don't appear on new lines. The button you added will submit the form by default. However, relying on default behavior may cause confusion. So add the type attribute with the value submit to the button to make it clear that it is a submit button. Okay, so they want us to add the type attribute and give it the value of submit. And this makes it clear that this is a submission button. Right, so um, like it says, it would submit by default, but you don't always want to rely on the default behavior because it could cause confusion. All right, great, test passed. All right, so we can use radio buttons for questions where you only want one answer out of multiple options. So here's an example of a radio button with the option of cat input type equals radio, cat. Remember that the input elements are self-closing. Before the text input, add a radio button with the option set as indoor. Okay, so we have another input and the type is supposed to be radio. And then input elements are self-closing and they just, so they just want the word text uh, cat, I guess, afterwards. So we'll just have, uh, or sorry, they want the text indoor afterwards, right? So it's self-closing. It's not, input doesn't wrap the text indoor. Indoor just comes afterwards. We can see here we have indoor, which is a radio button. What's next? Label elements are used to help associate the text for an input element with the input itself especially for assistive technologies like screen readers. Again, so this is an accessibility type of thing. So for example, label input type radio, cat label, makes it so clicking the word cat also selects the corresponding radio button. All right, so nest your radio button inside a label element. So where's our radio button? Here's our radio button, so let's just make a label and we'll close all the, our label. Okay, so no visible change, but we did wrap it inside a label. All right, the ID attribute is used to specify, uh, <coughs> identify specific HTML elements. Each ID attribute's value must be unique from all other ID values for the entire page. So just one ID per page, um, or sorry, the value has to be unique for that page. So add an ID attribute with the value indoor to the radio button. Okay. 
So here's our radio button. So we're going to add an ID attribute and the value is going to be indoor. When elements have multiple attributes, the order of the attributes doesn't matter. Okay, so we could have ID first or we could have type first, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, passes. Step 47, create another radio button below the first one, nest it inside a label element with outdoor as the label text. Give the radio button an ID attribute with outdoor as the value. Okay, so we have one radio button here, and now we want another one. Also going to be inside a label. Okay, so first let's make a label, because that's what our input's going to be inside of. And then let's make, right, so it should have outdoor is a label. <clears throat> and then we want the, uh, another radio button. So it's an input with ID of outdoor. And the type again is a radio. So exactly what we have before, just we're adding another option. And that option is going to be outdoor. So, right, we have indoor and outdoor, two radio buttons. Next. Notice that both radio buttons can be selected at the same time. Let's see. Right, so radio buttons are only supposed to be selected one at a time, and right now we can select both. Um, to make it, so selecting one radio button automatically deselects the other, they have to have the same name attribute with the same value. Right, so they both need the name attribute with the same value. So let's add the name attribute with the value indoor outdoor to both radio buttons. Okay, so we're going to add a name attribute and paste that in here. And this one also gets a name attribute and we'll paste that in here. And now if we try this again, right, now it deselects the other when we select one. So in order to do that, we just added the name attribute and then the value has to be the same. Right. Next challenge. Right. Step 49, if you select the indoor radio button and submit the form, the form data for the button is based on its name and value attributes. Since your radio buttons do not have a value attribute, the form data will include indoor, outdoor equals on, which is not useful when you have multiple buttons. Add a value attribute to both buttons for your convenience. Set the button's value to the same value as its ID attribute. So here we have the ID being indoor, so the value, in this case, we also want to be indoor. Right? This is so when our form submits, um, it's going to take that value, right? Because otherwise we wouldn't know if they selected indoor or outdoor when there are multiple options. All right, step 50. The field set element is used to group related inputs and labels together in a web form. The field set elements are block level elements, meaning that they appear on a new line, um, as opposed to inline elements, which appear on the same line, sort of like our uh, radio buttons and our input here and our button, they all appeared on the same line. So nest the indoor and outdoor radio buttons within a field set element. And don't forget to indent the radio buttons. Okay. Already sort of indented. So here we have field set. And then we'll close the field set. So you can see it's added our uh, our radio buttons inside this box, rectangle, rectangle. All right, the legend element acts as a caption for the content in the field set element. It gives users context about what they should enter into that part of the form. Add a legend element with the text, is your cat an indoor or outdoor cat above both of the radio buttons? All right, so we want above the radio buttons, a legend element, and this tells people what's inside our field set. Right, which in this case is uh, two radio buttons. Oh, didn't copy the I. Okay, so let's just see that here. 
it appears sort of inside of this border, right? Step 52. Next, you're going to add some new form input elements. So add another field set element directly below the current field set element. Alrighty, another field set. So let's set it up like this. We'll close it, move on to the next challenge. Add a legend element with a text, what's your cat's personality? inside the second field set element. All right, legend element with the text, what's your cat's personality? Legend. Close the legend. And copy this text. Copy all of it this time. Paste it inside of the legend. Look over here, what's your cat's personality? Great. Step 54, forms commonly use checkboxes for questions that may have more than one answer. For example, here's a checkbox with the option of tacos. Input type checkbox tacos. Under the legend element you just added, add an input with its type attribute set to checkbox and give it the option of loving, right? Maybe that's our cat's personality. So input type is checkbox, not radio this time. Close it off and just write the word loving. Here we can see it's a checkbox, it's square, it's not circle like radio buttons. Oh, it doesn't pass. The text loving should be located directly to the right of our checkbox, which it is. Make sure there's a space between the element and the text, which there is not. Now there is. Okay. So there are hints there you can see are very helpful for finding if you have any sort of small issue. Add an ID attribute with the value loving to the checkbox input. Okay, so ID loving. Next. Uh, there's another way to associate an input's element text with the element itself. You can nest the text within a label element and add a for attribute with the same value as the input's element ID attribute. So associate the text loving with the checkbox by only nesting the text loving in a label element and place it to the right side of the checkbox input element. That, that was a lot of text. Okay, so the other way that we can associate inputs element text with the element is using the for attribute inside of the label. So associate the text loving with the checkbox by only nesting the text loving in a label element and place it to the right side of the checkbox input. Okay, so we're just gonna do label. Label, am I doing this right? I don't think this is what they want. Let me, sorry, I'm gonna reread this. Um, text within a label element and add a for attribute with the same value. Okay. So, so they want for to be equal to loving, right? That's the same as the element's ID. Now let's see. That's not what they want. The text loving should no longer be directly to the right of your text box. It should be wrapped in a label element. Okay, so make sure there's space between the two elements. Um, okay, so they want label, sorry, I think input wasn't supposed to be nested inside. I think they just want this label over here. I think this was a bit unclear, in my opinion. Sometimes they're not always 100% clear on what they want, but I'll take the blame for this. Okay, so they want, the four is supposed to be the same as the ID of the input. So in this case, loving. And now we check our code. Should be wrapped inside, okay. Hmm. I'm not sure what's wrong here. Can nest it within an element, label element and add a four attribute with the same value. That's what we did. But it's saying it shouldn't be to the right. Is it saying they want the label before the input, maybe? So 
let me get rid of this. Um, get rid of that. Close the label and put in the words loving. Not sure here. Now, the new label element should be located directly to the right of your checkbox. I'm a bit perplexed. I'm gonna cut this and try pasting it here. Fortunately, this happens. This is, this is a good example of what coding's like. <laughs> you think you have it right and it's just not working. Um, the new label element should be located directly to the right of your checkbox. Make sure there's a space between the two elements. Okay, so you know, I guess that's not what I wanted. Um, let's cut this again. Move this here. Okay, so now there's a space. A lot of space here, space here. All right, space is everywhere. I think I had this before, but the issue was that there wasn't a space between input and label. And that is an hour. Okay. Um, so thanks to anyone that stuck around. Uh, it was probably not the easiest hour, especially if you've never done anything like this before. Hopefully this was a soft introduction to HTML. Uh, next time, if you're interested, you know, let me know um, if you want to continue with this. Happy to try out something different as well. Um, let's just submit this. We got to step 57 of the 69 steps. Um, and this is all the HTML that it really gets into. After that is CSS. There's a bit more HTML with uh, forms. And then they have the project already for this section. Um, more CSS, topography. I mean, there's a whole, whole lot of sections. Um, and this is just the HTML. And when you finish that, you can grab a certification.